So in section 4.2, we essentially develop some new rules for finding derivatives. So you can think of this as we just keep adding new tools to the pile of tools we have. So we can start coming across any type of function and find what its derivative would be. And that's kind of the goal after working in this course for a while is be able to find the derivative of all types of functions. So in this one, we focused on uh, exponential and logarithmic functions. I really came up with three examples that combine a bunch of things. And uh, I think we'll go through these. Once you've seen these, I think you'll be prepared for most of the examples that you'll need to do in the section. And you'll have a good understanding of how to apply these rules. All right, so let's take a look at A. Notice I'm just saying find the derivative for each of the functions. So something like we've done before. So if I take a look at A, I want to find F prime, right? And the first thing I encounter is a ln x to the fifth. Now, see, I don't have a rule for that. I have a rule for ln x. Well, remember we had in college algebra maybe, or we had maybe in uh, algebra two, you had rules for about how to uh, break up the logs. And there were several rules like that, and they're in your textbook as well. Well, this is where we're going to need them. We're going to rewrite kind of like we did with the power rule stuff. In fact, I'm going to go up here and rewrite this. So I'm not doing calculus at this step. I'm going to say, you know what? When I have a power inside of the log like that, I can bring it out. So this is actually 5 ln x minus e the x plus 1. With that stated, now I can find this derivative. I, I can find that derivative just fine because that's 5 times the derivative of ln x. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. That's one of those new rules. And then minus the derivative of e to the x. Well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. It's a special function. So that'd be e to the x. And then plus the derivative of 1, but the derivative of 1 is 0 because it's a constant. So I got my f prime essentially in one step. Right? It was one calculus step, but we had to do a little bit of algebra up here. Similar with B, notice it's a, a ln natural log of something that is an x, right? So anytime I see that, I need to figure out what to do. But there is a rule that says ln of something, let's call this A, over something else, let's call that B, is equal to ln of the something up here, which we called A, minus ln of the something down here, which we called B that these are actually the same thing, just different ways to write it. So if I can rewrite it this way, suddenly I can start really working with this. So I say, okay, what's ln3? What's the derivative of ln3? Let me think about that while I write, start getting my work going. Ooh, ln3. Well, ln3 is a constant. Put in your calculator, you get a number. So actually the derivative of this is zero. Then I say, well, What's ln of 2x? Uh-oh, I only have a rule for ln x. I'm in trouble again. Ah, but there's still another rule. So this is equal to ln 3. Notice I haven't done calculus, so that's why I didn't put 0 here. Minus, and this is actually equal to ln of 2 plus ln x. That's another log rule. So log rules say I can break up multiplication by writing it as addition. So it's a pretty valuable rule to have. And so I can rewrite this finally as ln3 minus ln2, and then distribute that negative, minus ln x. So finally I come down and I find out, okay, derivative of ln3, now I'm going down here to take the derivative, is 0. Derivative of ln2 is 0 also, that's a number. All I have here is minus, and that's a constant, so it comes out minus 1 times the derivative of ln x, which is what? It's 1 over x. So this whole thing came out to be just 1 over x. Okay, what about c? I think I'm going to need some space for c, so I'm going to erase everything. Not that c is very difficult. It's just going to look a little different. There's a lot going on here. Now you may think maybe we should start rewriting stuff, but let's just go ahead and start out and see what we need to do. I can go piece by piece, right? So I go e to 10, e to the 10th power. You may want to write down the derivative of e 10 is e 10, but the problem with that is the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But this is e, a number, to the power, and the power is another number. 
this is a constant. This derivative is actually zero, so that's gone. And now I have minus one half. Remember, constants can come out when you're multiplying them times the derivative of e to the x. Well, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So that stays. Now this is completely different. This isn't an e to the x, it's a 2 to the x. Now that's 10 times it. Well, I can keep the 10 because 10 is just a constant multiplying it. So constants multiplying come out of the derivative. But now I got to figure out what the derivative of 2 to the x is. And on page 221, you see all the rules listed out in the bottom. It says, and this one's worth writing down this time, it says d dx of b to the x, where b is a number, is equal to b to the x times ln of b. Okay, following that pattern, b is 2. So derivative of 2 to the x is 2 to the x again. Okay, I'm going to write that down. And then ln of the number, which here is 2. And this may look like you can simplify it. You can rewrite this, put ex on top. But over here, you can't multiply this 10 in because this isn't just a 2. It's actually a 2 to the x. And so it's not the same as 20 to the x, for instance. This is the most we can do as far as simplification unless we rewrote that first term. So you can see that as before, a lot of your algebra skills come back into play. And really, we're going to spend some time doing algebra before we apply the calculus. And that's a big part of this course.